Hello and welcome back. Today we will be doing a restarting steps uh, for the USA in order to try and get the best start possible. Um, last episode, uh, UK never declared a war on Great Xing, which kind of ruined our plan of helping out to create the eventual Heavenly Kingdom so that we could get massive, massive migration and kind of try and show off the new migration mechanic and just how pushed it can be. And so we will be restarting. We won't go over like fully explaining everything that we went over last time. Big TLD ours about the US is they have really strong companies. Um, we are going to be focusing on Pennsylvania first and then starting to branch out into Alabama and the two Virginias are going to be kind of our early spots. Uh, we've spent uh, a little bit of authority on road maintenance for that construction efficiency. Uh, we are going greener grass. We went with the wood company uh, in order to do chop chops because chop chops big nice and we are going to be expanding a little bit differently. We've decreased autonomy in Liberia here uh, as kind of our opening salvo and then what we will be doing uh, we've also done all the construction business, all the swapping of the PMs. And then what we'll be doing is we'll be declaring on uh, Qing for Beijing before the UK loses their interest there. Uh, and if this doesn't work out, we will just keep re-rolling this until we can make it work. So we have our interest being declared. Um, our interest will appear there before they lose theirs, um, is my understanding of how this will work, because they will re-evaluate the interests. It'll take a, at least a couple days, and so there will be some overlap. And as long as we declare before they lose their interest, we will be able to sway them in. And so this is what we'll be going for. And hopefully uh, we can get them to you know go to war with us. We, of course, will be um, adding a whole bunch of conscripts for the purpose of making them willing to join for us, and this is going to be how we uh, open up here. Okay, so after putting everything in place, we get a little bit of a low roll. Great Britain responds to the opium ban. They seem to be ignoring the Qing ban on opium. We're going to try and declare war on Qing anyways, but uh, anticipating that we will have to restart from here. If we restart, we will be back with the next attempt. If we manage to sway them on over, uh, then we'll just continue from here. All right, second time's the charm. We got ourselves a war here. We were the first one to declare. We declare for Beijing. Uh, we wanted our primary war goal to, of course, be the one that's accruing actual infamy for us. Um, ooh, we forgot to reduce autonomy on Liberia, so a little bit of a miss in terms of our infamy decay, but overall not a big deal. Uh, we swayed uh, UK in for Shaozhou Treaty Port, and this is very key for helping to eventually make them collapse. We also went for Qing War Reparations and Lib Manchuria and Changzi, really just kind of getting them, hoping they kind of back down here, but if we have to fight, we will. Um, we will, of course, uh, mobilize what little army we have uh, in the 288 conscripts uh, and get these kind of coming on up. Uh, uh, we will almost certainly have to divide those guys up into a bunch of different armies, uh, but we are hoping that they just uh, throw in the towel because there's big uh, kind of difference here, and we do have a lot of maneuvers worth of war goals on them, but we do want to make sure we get the war reps and stuff here. So this is going to be the opening salvo here for us instead of going for the small ball expansion. We also see Texas win this time around, which we will improve relations with them, which will help us to annex them. And now that we've kind of got our run locked in, we'll do some other things that we didn't do last time, like the early incorporation on Arkansas. I think that this will be pretty good considering we are going to be going a little bit on the rice farms, uh, both here and as well as in Louisiana, although they'll be considerably better in Louisiana. All right, it looks like we will finally be getting in on Manchuria here, which is gonna be our first landing. Second one's gonna go in on Beijing, uh, but we have uh, made a bit of an ingress here. Um, now we're gonna send on over the next army, and I think we're just gonna land Beijing directly with these guys. Uh, they should be able to do a decent job. And then these guys over here, we're going to just move over to the front, um, but we should be able to push in through Manchuria and the UK who hasn't been helping us at all, um, but we'll be getting a treaty for for our struggles uh, we'll finally start sending troops on over because now there is a front and so they're like hey we can help out we can do the things uh, it can all be super nice uh, I think that we can just push in through here uh, but just to make sure that we can uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna raise a whole bunch more conscripts now that we've gotten in we had taken down a lot of these conscripts in this army so that it could get the landing in but now the landings in so now the gloves are off we're just gonna do this uh, and it, okay it's gonna nuke our conscripts convoys and we're going to have different various struggles but it should be fine enough we should be able to push through here uh and try and work our way on over to beijing which is what we need in order to enforce Oop, not that one that's the beijing we are looking for so we got good enough relations with Texas, so this means they just join straight on up. Um, if, in theory, you want to have the absolute best roll possible, you would want to re-roll repeatedly uh, in order to get this Texas business. 
And here we have it, a big nice piece of steel for us, especially because that war was pretty expensive. With the US, you can really run up a lot of expense, uh, and uh, we have done just that. I think we're actually going to put in a bunch of consumption taxes and crank up the taxes to kind of max here, uh, to kind of reflect a new state of affairs here. But we are also going to be able to add a whole bunch of, uh, what is it, uh, a whole bunch of construction sectors, I hope. Off the back of the getting war reps on this? Maybe not. We should be able to. We also have a decent chance to uh, get laissez-faire. We're going to take a look at this guy. He's an abolitionist. We're probably just going to give him, uh, you know, a little bit of extra juice. Uh, Andrew Jackson. Make Andrew Jackson a reformer. Reformed Andrew Jackson. Hell yeah, brother. We're doing it for the memes there on that one. I'm not even sure reformed Andrew Jackson is better, but, uh, you know, we're going to reform him. We can fix him. All right, so we have a nice opportunity we got while recruiting generals. We're going to fire this guy. We're not going to fire this guy. Just kidding. He's a little bit busy. Now we're going to fire this guy. We're going to say, you know, you won that battle, but uh, too bad, so sad. And what we got here was a market liberal who's popular uh, and is uh, in the Southern Planters. So what we're going to do is we're going to retire this guy. We're going to, or sorry, we're going to exile dissident. Mind you, we might just roll an abolitionist landowner, which would be fantastic, but we're going to exile dissident. And instead, we are going to get in return a market liberal boy. Oh, hey, and we got a market liberal agitator. Hot damn. Look at that market liberals all around turtles all the way down uh this market liberal landowner uh we maybe will try and invite later he would be quite nice we do have this agitator in so we can't invite him uh but this is going to make it much much easier for us to pass laissez-faire or actually won't make it any easier for us to pass laissez-faire actually what we could do is we could side this guy in on the tick yeah let's side him in on the tick and so oh just kidding just kidding I guess we're, we already slotted him in, so we're going to take a 40% tick off. Maybe we let this peel. If we're going to do this, though, and be this illegitimate, uh, no, it's, it's not worth it. it. It'd be better. It's better for us to just tick faster. But now we don't have as much opposition to this, and we can do the higher taxes and do all this stuff, and the landowners will not be upset. And so we are going to get to add a bunch more construction. We're, of course, going after Peru, Bolivia, uh, as we did last episode. Good old reformer Andrew Jackson is our new president. Hot damn. That's going to be pretty nice for us. Also, we might be able to take a stab at uh, banning slavery here. Um, let's just take a look. Now, the southern planters, they're upset, but they're not super, super upset, and they're not super, super powerful, and they don't control an enormous portion of our, you know, kind of block here. So let's just take a look at what banning slavery looks like. It looks like it only upsets them. And I think we can avoid the Civil War, but maybe we just fight the Civil War, the classic American style. Um, but I think that 42% chance to progress is quite a bit, and we can enhance that by lowering taxes one notch. We can certainly afford it, which takes us above 91 for righteous government, because, of course, Andrew Jackson, the reformer, gets along quite nicely with the, you know, Republican petite bourgeoisie and the two abolitionists. Andrew Jackson, I repeat, the reformer. Um, and so I think we could just kind of pretty relatively painlessly pass slavery banned. Um, we also have a movement that is uh, courtesy of this gentleman who we invited. Can we, is anyone available? No, no one's available. And so I think we just get it in there because why not? Uh, it's going to be a pretty easy uh, slavery ban here. And then uh, on top of all this, we're going to get rid of some consumption taxes. The reason we're doing this is because we're over 90% clout now. Or sorry, we're over 90% on the legitimacy. So we're going to get a whole bunch of extra enactment time there. We're going to be getting extra enactment time here. And it's going to synergize pretty well. And so we're going to get to pass this hopefully pretty quick. Uh, we will see the ban slavery pop up just a second or preserve slavery is going to be a thing but if not it's just going to absolutely fly also we're going after this here nationalism is not spreading to us as well and i think once nationalism not spreads to us we are going to take the decision to manifest our destiny and then have a little bit of a go at mexico we do make sure to interfere again with the Ottomans forcing the release of uh, Iraq. Uh, this time it feels a little bit harder. Uh, I think it was a little bit uh, later on that this happened. And it's looking like we're just going to rev and we're going to have ourselves a handy dandy uh, civil war. Which is fine by us. We also notably, uh, as soon as we run down low enough infamy, we're going to click manifest destiny. So that's going to be fine. Um, that we're going to be involved in a civil war and we're going to have a ton of decaying infamy. But very importantly, uh, for the civil war okay one it's not very big but two even if it was big 
we can get a hundred conscripts out of Beijing. And so uh, the fact that we have Beijing and Beijing is not incorporated, it won't be part of the rev, uh, makes it so that this rev, even if it weren't, uh, you know, tiny, tiny, uh, would be pretty inconsequential. Now, we are building a little bit in some of the rev spots, and so it is a little bit, uh, a little bit annoying, but this is perhaps a little bit more of the natural American flavor, which is that we are going to be experiencing a rev. Now, the only unfortunate thing about this is it looks like the rev's gonna pop before we manage to enforce on, uh, you know, on the Ottomans here, so maybe there's a couple things we can, uh, you know, make a few changes. Uh, this guy's engaged in a battle, uh, in order to force onto the capital, something like this. Hopefully this gets in, 14 days. Uh, looks like they're patrolling over here, so it might just get in real quick. Just a little sneaky sneak, uh, right here, and we will be getting in. Nope, just kidding, we are, no sneaky sneaks from us. Uh, but hopefully we can, we can still manage to enforce on the Ottomans before the Rev completely pops. The Rev is popped, and it's a good thing we have reformer Andrew Jackson at the helm in order to keep everything nice and under control. With President Andrew Jackson, the reformer at the helm, we of course put down the Civil War, no problem. Who needs Lincoln when you have Andrew Jackson? Everyone remembers Andrew Jackson, the great reformer and protector of human rights. Um, when this finishes, we will get uh, the reconstruction. And for the reconstruction, we're gonna get like, a ton of pop-ups, a ton of options, we're not gonna show them all. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna side with African-American every single time. The reason you do this is that uh, it allows you to incorporate uh, places in Africa faster. Uh, if you have two primary culture pops of African American and Yankee um, instead of uh, Af Yankee and Dixie. Now, it is possible in theory to thread the needle and get three accepted cultures. However, practically speaking, Yankee's not, or sorry, Dixie is not going to be that useful unless you have some sort of strange plan for having the African American Yankee Dixie, uh, you know, ethno state, in which case, shout out to you, I suppose. Uh, but functionally, um, we will be able to integrate European stuff quickly and accept European pops from Yankee. And so Dixie is a little superfluous and unnecessary and so instead we'd prefer Yankee plus African American so every time we get one of these options we will choose that. Now uh, looks like the Confederacy ran up the bill a little bit here. Uh, I assume that we will yeah we will the ship will be righted. Uh, we have some various things going on and so we will get everything kind of back in order. During the war we did of course uh, do the manifest destiny and so our next big war is probably going to be against Mexico. Um, we are going to take a look here uh and what we're going to be looking for when we declare this war is we're going to be looking at strategic regions. We have a sneaking suspicion that not too many people have an interest in the Great Plains, other than the Vroom Vroom outside. We see that it's just the UK, but here, in the Pacific region, it's going to include Russia. So when we declare the war, we want to declare it in the Great Plains or in Dixie, so as to dodge the chance that Russia can side against us. And, you know, maybe we wait a little while and we look to piggyback on top of one of the UK's wars, so that uh, if we are sided on the same side as the UK, um, it will be impossible for uh, them to join against us, and so this will be advantageous for us. So why don't we declare a few interests in areas where the UK does have some subjects, and maybe look to uh, get ourselves involved in some sort of UK conflict uh, alongside them. Them so that we will not have to uh, fight them when we fight Mexico. What a travesty. For all the human rights things that Andrew Jackson has been doing for humanity because he loves human beings, Andrew Jackson is a target of an assassination and he dies. <laughs> Terrible. All right. We will have Cornelius, good sir, as our... <sighs> Cornelius the authoritarian. Oof. We probably should have actually taken a little bit of look at uh, which generals we could have promoted or demoted and tried to get. We could have gotten the slaver, uh, Westall Wilcox, or we could have maybe tried to get the Jacksonsonian Democrat instead of Andrew Jackson, not Jacksonsonian Democrat, but in fact, reformer. We could have tried to do that. All right, guys, it's time for some very pushed cheese, and that is the resignation from office. is super overtuned in terms of the event. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to uh, instantly pass the law that is currently causing a revolution against us. You can use this if you use it, uh, in which case it's abdicate. If you use it with a monarchy, it gets you off a of monarchy onto presidential republic. Uh, it automatically passes the law they're agitating towards. We don't really care about passing lo poor laws. We're fine passing poor laws. But also, it's going to minus 90% the clout of all the interest groups in government. We're going to slot these guys into government, and then 
this will be everyone in government except for the trade unionists and the armed forces. We would really like to demarginalize the trade unionists. And I'm not sure this will demarginalize the trade unionists, but it's worth a shot. So we will say, you know, the, it's impossible for us to pass guaranteed liberties because uh, this gentleman here, he's an authoritarian, unlike Andrew Jackson, um, who is a reformer. And so what we're going to do is we are going to resign from office with this gentleman here. Uh, and we will get this event where we will get to auto pass the law that they're currently agitating towards. So the idea is you force agitate a, a revolution against yourself for a law you want to pass and you can instantly pass it and they will have an election and we will have an election in six months and we will get 90 percent minus 90 percent interest group political strength for everyone in government which is currently our entire government um uh, if we choose that option uh, we can also uh if i recall correctly enact autocracy if we wanted to we don't want to but we could um and so we'll choose this option we will get rid of this guy we will instead have robert ransoll and we will demarginalize that is, demarginalize these boyos. Hell yeah, brother. This is so hard to demarginalize the trade unions under normal circumstances. And now we have the trade unions in government. We can, in fact, even do this. Except we can't. Exit reform government. Reform government. Okay, well, this guy is the president. But we have to include these guys. We have to include these guys? Wait, why can't we click confirm? Ah, uh, because insurrectionary. Well, they're not going to be insurrectionary for very long. And instead of uh, suppressing, uh, it will exit this. Instead of suppressing these guys, I think we're just going to bolster the trade unions, look to keep them demarginalized. And if we never take them out of government, if we never pull them out of government, they will stay demarginalized. So this is fantastic for us. Also, this guy is not too, too bad. Meticulous is a nice one. Institution change speed, some bureaucracy. And if I recall correctly... Erudite? Oh, I guess it's not all that great. Alright, fair enough. But the main point is, uh, we got this trade union's boyo, and, uh, he's gonna be with us. With us till the very end. Big nice. And also, a uh, huge drop and tank in, uh, radicalism because we generated a ton of loyalists. This is another big part of it. Alright, so we did get another election here, uh, and... Surprise, surprise, the trade unionist guy didn't win it, but since he's in government already, he's not going to get kicked out, and he's just going to stay in here unless we do something to make him real madge. And so we're going to be getting manufacturing industries throughput and workforce ratio way earlier than we should. And also, it's going to be early in the context of the fact that we are really going to be start siphoning off a ton of pops, and so this is going to be something that's difficult uh, to maintain long term. And so, yeah. Also, we're just going to help out the UK here. Big nice. Uh, and by by doing this, uh, we are going to make it so that the UK will be unable to side for us when we go against Mexico. I think we're going to wait a little bit until it's pretty close to popping, um, but because we want to have a little bit less infamy here. Uh, but this is going to allow us to go for Mexico without the UK interfering, and so we're going to be finding and setting up a war against Mexico as well here. All right, so we have our war, we're returning everything, and we're also adding Mexican war operations, making it primary and open Mexican market and making it primary. The reason behind this is to discourage Mexico uh, from backing down. We don't want them to back down, and so doing this will help them to not back down. Crossing our fingers, hoping they often back down at 95%, uh, and we're going to have a war here. So this is going to be super nice for us. We are not yet assigned to this front. That is a little bit of a yikes. Uh, we sent the China army over. Uh, and that's the one we've mainly mobilized, uh, but I guess they're going to be a little bit slow on the uptake there, so I guess that's... Okay, this is going to be fine. Uh, we're going to conscript up here out of the New England HQ, and then we're going to look to land down here in the Yucatan with these boyos. That should be fairly quick. They're going to assign to the front. We're going to assign to the front. But there are 20 stack, which we are mainly just using troops from Beijing here. Um, our 20 stack will be coming in and uh, will be hopefully able to push. Uh, we do have, uh, it's going to be a 20, it's going to be a 120 stack eventually because we're conscripting up on both sides. And so this should be fairly straightforward. Also passing universal suffrage, super easy off the back of, um, you know, uh, the political nonsense that happened here. Uh, Hyper legitimate and uh, trade union. Oh, it's so 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 nice. Well, would you look at that? Our destiny's been manifested. Big nice, b -b -b big nice. And of course, this is going to be really valuable. This dirt's so 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 valuable. We're probably going to start incorporating California immediately, as well as Nevada. Any place where we're going to have mass migrations, um, 
as a result of having a bunch of gold there, I think is worth incorporating just kind of right off the bat. Uh, but we'll stop our incorporations there, I suppose. And then we're just gonna be, gonna be kind of in chill mode, chill and build mode here for a little bit. Uh, but what do we have to do in order to, uh, we have to own all of it. Yeah, we're gonna own all of it pretty soon. And then we will uh, have an opportunity to uh, buy the Oregon border dispute. We will be able to buy this from the UK. We just have to have all of the territory and good relations, if I recall correctly. All of Montana and Wyoming, which we are working on right now. Uh, there's Montana, Wyoming's there. And so uh, we will be able to get Washington, Idaho, and Oregon from them without a, you know, scrape. And then we will fully kind of have normal American borders from the opening here. Well, this wasn't the revolt we were looking for, uh, because this is not the Taiping Rebellion. Both of these guys have closed borders, so we're not going to interfere, I don't think. Um... I mean, we could get an obligation, but that's not really going to be that useful. We can transfer some of the states, like out in the middle of nowhere, uh, like some of these states. To be fair, uh, if we could declare an interest over here, that would actually be... Ooh, we can declare an interest in Central Asia and in West Siberia. Well, if we can do that, maybe we can do something a little bit interesting here. In that, uh, if we can sway in for uh, some of these things, one of these splits... Ooh, looks like they already restored Tomsk. So if you, if you can take Tomsk... Then you can trade it to Russia for something, but it looks like Russia's actually restored their borders already. That's unfortunate. Um, yeah, so we're probably not going to be able to get anything off of this, but we're hoping that this increases the chances of uh, them getting uh, the negative lost opium wars uh, or the destroyed mandate, this type of thing. Um, we'll see how this shakes out, but hopefully we get uh, Heavenly Kingdom Rev, which is very much the entire reason we restarted the run. So, uh, the Aristocratic Revolt won, and I realized a little bit, perhaps late, uh, that maybe it matters which one wins, because one of these had the modifier for losing to the Opium War. Now they now they haven't lost to the Opium War, uh, but things will continue. Uh, and we are yo-yo swaying into this Peru-Bolivia conflict, which is one of the reasons why the, the presence of these types of conflicts that you get into with these small powers that are colonizing is the one of the reasons why the La Plata interest is so 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 useful because it allows you to reverse sway uh, and yo-yo sway in order to get a free subject in Argentina or Chile. Here we'll be getting a free one in Bolivia and so we'll just ask them kindly will you become our subject which is going to be big nice for us. They will of course say yes and then we will just do nothing to help them because they got this easy peasy and so we just get a kind of uh, free subject here uh, for basically nothing. We'll be able to reduce autonomy on them and then annex Peru uh, just right quick. Uh, we're still you know kind of coming on up here. We're almost to the point where we can manifest our destiny fully. We got a little bit more colonizing to do which is of course slowed down a little bit by the fact that we decided to colonize over here but we want to be able to trade these places away later and so we started colonizing there anyways uh, because we did pass our colonialization laws also trying to get free trade in which should be pretty nice well it looks like partially because of the unique us mechanics that make really really large parties uh our law pass is completely bricked because we can't actually formulate a government because the yeoman farmers need to go in as a result of this election that just brewed up now for the election, almost all of the vote is going to go to the Republican Party. Uh, the Free Trade Party is going to get crushed. And so uh, we are going to back off of this law. This is an unfortunate thing. Uh, we did really want to pass Free Trade, but this will make this guy no longer revolutionary. Hopefully. Hopefully. Bueller? No, he's still pretty mad. That's unfortunate. I, I hate to say it, but I wish we had Andrew Jackson around. Uh, but he's not revolutionary, so we could, for example, resign, or we could exile him. Oh, we can't exile him because he's the president. We can only resign him from office. But we can do this, uh, keeping the trade unions in here uh, to make sure that we keep their bonus and uh, everyone's all happy again. We have a nice government. Big nice. Uh, they're going to crush in the election, and so we kind of have a decision of what a law we're going to pass. We maybe want to go pro-army. Right now, we're just saber-rattling a lot with all of our conscripts, and so I think we're actually kind of preferable to just keep it like that because we don't actually have to use the conscripts, but we can shake our fists at people, so this is what we'll maybe be doing. Um, we could try and go for prop tax with this tiny itty-bitty, yeah, but I don't think that works. 
um, too well, and I think it's too late for trying to go back to land-based, and we're not going to risk the consumption-based, and so I guess we're just kind of, you know, in chill mode since we couldn't pass free trade. Well, this is an interesting state of affair in politics where we have a party of the industrialists and then a party of everyone else, and everyone else is just piled in and super happy. Uh, quite, quite interesting. The trade unionists just get to stay in uh, and be demarginalized for, like, forever, I suppose. I Although we can't pull them out just to do some stuff. Um, but I think we're going to conclude the episode here. You know, uh, the other episode was really, really long. I think we've gotten to a fairly late uh, year. Uh, a lot of it was played off camera because a lot of it was just doing stuff that we did last episode. Just kind of want to brush over the companies. We do have all the ore companies, uh, the mineral companies rather, and uh, also the chopping company. Um, we are looking forward to uh, trying to get after uh, open hearth process after going pharmaceuticals. Very, very similar research uh, pattern to last episode. We're hoping that Great Shing collapses. Um, we could take a save and maybe take a look at uh, if they... We'll take a save and we're going to swap sides and take a look at what's going on internally with them. Okay, so looking at Ching, we see that uh, the one we care about is the Heavenly Kingdom. Although Fragile Unity, if they schism, this is actually something we would prefer to not happen. Um, uh, and part of the drivers is losing the Opium War, but also um, uh, them having a revolution. So I don't think they are getting dinged from the, the Opium War because they had a civil war and uh, they've gone into debt and taken loans. Although I guess I'm not really entirely sure uh, where their status is regarding the Opium Wars, where it's considered whether or not they've lost it. Um, they're currently not running any type of uh, either deficit or they're not in default and they don't have a negative Opium War modifier. Okay. Uh, but taking a look at the journal entry here, we see that the Heavenly Kingdom, they need to have Protestant missionaries active in the country for at least several years. And it looks like there are Protestant missionaries of some kind because there are a lot of Protestant pops. And so this is going to be nice. And But very key, the turmoil has to be greater than 15%. Unfortunately for us, the Rev is going to have reset that turmoil, and there's going to be, oops, the Rev's going to have reset that turmoil, and so there's going to be no turmoil anywhere uh, following that revolution, or anywhere that uh, was part of the revolution. Although, in the long term, they should get a lot of turmoil because they have a lot of unemployed pops. And so people will get really mad. Um, they are likely to default and all these types of things. So I guess we're going to continue playing the waiting game as the USA, keeping our interests here, and just kind of biding our time for a heavenly kingdom that we are going to look to support. But in the meantime, in particular, we're probably going to try and import all the agricultural goods. Um, maybe even more aggressively than we have been doing, although grain is not going to be as effective on that front, because this is one way in which we can create unemployment because the uh, the rice paddies, you see there are maximum employment. If we build a silk plantation, for example, over the rice paddy, this will fire 5k pops. And so this will help to drive turmoil up. So this is gonna be our strategy moving forward as the USA. Uh, we, of course, are concluding this episode here as the USA. Um, got a lot done, managed to get to a pretty reasonable end date again, doing a lot of the stuff we did last episode, but we do have Peru Bolivia as a subject. Um, we are subjugating Transvaal right now, or in the process of it, as the USA. Um, the reason why is because they started to colonize Northern Cape, and so we don't want to just take Transvaal, and so it's going to be way slower to get all this gold, but we're still going to be going after it. I think we subjugated Brunei, and I think we subjugated Bahrain, um, going after the subjugations, which is a little bit cheaper on the infamy, uh, because we managed to go after Mexico as well. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do the YouTube algorithm thing, and have a good day.